One, two, one, two. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Is it coming out of the speakers? Yeah? Yeah, okay, cool. So hi, everybody. Uh, first, uh, I'm really glad that I made it today because uh, the Czech Railway is uh, especially good. I spent four hours on the road. Uh, so that's why I'm not second, but the last one. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, maybe goes a little bit against what Rudolf was talking about at the beginning and so on, uh, about the concurrency and basically that the channels are, are, are uh, actually mutexes in a sense. So, uh, and we're going to talk about the internals, how the channels are implemented, what are the limitations, uh, how you should use them, how you should not use them, and, uh, <clears throat> and some other uh, implications. So maybe a little bit about me first. So uh, I'm in the business quite a while. Uh, I started with Pascal, then I learned Assembler because it was much faster. I was in the demo scene. I don't know if, if anybody remembers demos. There was the competition for making uh, something really cool in four kilobytes or something, or even less. Uh, then I learned C, C++, and then a lot of other languages. I uh, was doing software as a service. Uh, first one was in 2002. There was, uh, if you know, mapi.cz. Uh, so that was it. That's the stuff we did uh, back in the day. And now I'm working in Apiary, which is uh, it deals with the APIs, let's say. Uh, so what we're going to talk about. First, what the channels are, how uh, there are types, or it's basically a channel, but you can do a lot of things. You can make a buffer and so on, cover this. Then we're going to make a, I'll try to go through this source code and see what's there. Uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, stuff which is not idiomatic because it's unsafe. You see pointers and so on. Uh, then I found an article which, which uh, says the axioms of Go channels, how they work. And so some, some basic principles you should remember always. Like whenever you deal with them, remember this. Then, and last bit will be like when to use them, when maybe a mutex is better choice. And how about the performance? So, is it, um, maybe I, uh, I'll, first I'll ask a few questions maybe. So who's got some C, C++ background, writing server stuff? Like thre p threads and mutexes, semaphores and stuff like this. A couple of hands. Uh, does everybody know what semaphore is? Yes? Cool. Great. What a producer consumer queue is? Yeah? Cool. So, that's good. So, we can go quickly through this. Uh, so, ah, uh, sorry, it's too many. Okay, the first one. I call this one a memory barrier. Uh, because it basically is a synchronized buffer channel where you create a channel of some type. It doesn't say any size of any buffer. So uh, it basically means that one go routine from, uh, it goes, the value you're sending goes straight from the stack of one go routine to the stack to the other one. So both have to be ready for this and the, 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 the data are copied straight away from stack to stack of each of the go routines. So apparently, both block. If they are receiving and there's not the, the sender is not ready, they block. If sender is ready, but the receiving part is not ready, they block. Uh, so they sort of are synchronized. So you can make them do something at a certain point. Uh, the other one is the producer consumer crew, I call it. And that's the asynchronous buffer channel. So how it works. It is what it says. It is a produ producer consumer crew where you, have, where you can have multiple producers, multiple consumers. And internally, there's a ring buffer. So at the beginning, you say how the ring buffer, ring buffer is big. And basically, the, 
the Go routine goes and copies, or it's not really copying, as we will see later, uh, the stuff to the buffer channel. Uh, well, the, the, the channel's buffer. And if there's a reader, then he'll get it from, the, from that buffer. Or maybe directly if they're both ready and so on. Uh, it basically works first come, first serve. So uh, if you have many readers, the first one who tried to read will get it. Uh, and the third one is where you have no data. Basically, it's the produce, the consumer, but there's no data involved at all. So there's this empty struct that's basically a one pointer, it's nothing. So uh, it behaves completely the same as the produce to consumer, but there's no memory involved. Which I've found a couple of instances where I found it useful to have like, I don't know, I want to allow only five Go routines working with the database, for example. Uh, and so you can easily make it like this, uh, using this. So there's no data, it's just saying, okay, five is the maximum, no more. Uh, they're much faster, as we will see later. So uh, now, now is the interesting part. I'm gonna go through the code and you know, uh, point out some uh, interesting bits. Uh, you'll see unsafe pointer, atomic, and so on. Uh, it's different than what you usually write with, when you write Go. You try to avoid this as much as you can, but uh, sometimes it's useful. Uh, if you want to look later, that's the way to go. Go SRC runtime, Chen Go. It used to be Chen C, but uh, it has changed to, to Go. So, uh, now I'll try, I'll have to sit because I'm gonna scroll down. So this is the source code. Uh, sorry. Can I make it bigger? I hope so. Yes. Is it big enough? Is it good? Yeah. So it actually is pretty simple. Uh, you see there's a lot of, lot of information which is not that important for, uh, for the, to, to understand how it works. So there are some constants, and this is the important part. The chan, H chan struct. That's basically the channel itself. Where, as you can see, is something called buff, which is unsafe pointer. And that's an array, possibly. It depends on the type of the, of the channel. If it's buffered, unbuffered, and so on. Uh, but basically, the here, that's the ring buffer. It is unsafe pointer because it has to be, uh, you know, you, you specify a type, but this is a generic code. And the generic code is doing it the old school C way, having, what, uh, having a pointer, nothing else. Uh, there's this, as you can see in the comments, this uh, total data in queue, it's count of the items, there's the size. And element size, that's important so you can uh, you can, that's the size of the type you're putting in, if it's closed. Then a pointer to a type, which is uh, internal structure, which has like what is the int and what is uh, string and so on. And some uh, elements then is this, these are indexes to the circle buffer. And this part is a queue of, of uh, go routines waiting to receive and waiting to send. And then this part, a mutex, which is, lo uh, which is locking the access, serializing the access. Uh, the, the wait queues, the receive queue and send queue uh, are pretty simple. Uh, it's basically a linked list, nothing else. The pseudo G, there's a struct, there's a struct mm -hmm. which actually represents uh, represents the relationship between go routines and channels. So in, in the relational databases world, it's the, it's the, it's the mapping table uh, where it's n to n. So basically foreign keys, right? Nothing else. As the first one and the last one, uh, we'll see that's easy. So this is just for the reflect mechanism, it's internal. And this is the important part, which 
creates the channel itself. As you can see, there comes the chan type. That's the type of the channel. It's, the, it's basically the, 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 the type of the element you're wanting to, you're uh, putting there. Uh, some basic checks, not really important. That's basic, this should never happen. Any of these should never happen, right? This is something should never happen. Whoops. So, that's not so important. Now, this is the, the, the first imp interesting part. We see, <clears throat> this is for, here gets the memory allocated for the buffer. The first part, you can see it in the comments, in a way. The first one, the first bit here, is if the element has no pointers, basically, you're, it's empty. So that's the, that's the semaphore type, where there's uh, uh, the, the garbage collector, is not, there are no pointers for interesting for him, for the garbage collector. It just mouths GC, well, that's allocating memory, GC, and the GC is a of it. Size, this, this H chan size is the size of the struct. It's a bit like C in this case. If you were doing C, you can see this, what, what's going on. Basically size, element size, and you allocate everything in one go. Uh, this function add, it basically, uh, what it does, it's not here, it's in, uh, it's in different bits, but what it, this does is uh, adds to this pointer, it adds this size, so uh, it is pointer arithmetics, right, from the C uh, as usual stuff. Uh, otherwise, just put it there if there's nothing. Or otherwise, it, it creates the new channel and the new array of the elements and so on. And that's it. So, I would say pretty simple, pretty straightforward stuff at the moment. And now the in interesting parts. So, this function chain buffer, chain buff, this basically is, is again, you get the, you know, you get the base pointer of the, of the whole array and you do a, a pointer arithmetics, you add a pointer and you see it basically is an index uh, to the buffer. This is used to, to receive either the late, uh, the, the top item or the first item or any of the items. So now is the sending part. This EP unsafe pointer, that's the, that's the, that's the interesting bit here. That says, oh, sorry. That that is actually uh, a pointer to a stack of the Go routine, which, are, which is sending the data. Uh, block pool that comes from the select statement, because select statement can be blocking or uh, or not blocking, and this is the this is it gets co compiled to this code basically, where it says if if it if it should block or shouldn't block, in this case, and the type H and so on. Uh, these are for the for checking the race conditions. I'm going to skip this. Now is the interesting bit. If the channel, if the structure, if the struct H chan, basically the channel is nil, and if it's it should not block, then it returns false and everything is good. Otherwise, go park means uh, sleep. It's basically a sleep for the scheduler. It goes and saves it forever. So this means that. Any nil channel, if you have a channel which is nil, and you try to send on it, it will block. Right? It will block forever because there is no way. And now, that's, uh, I'm going to cover this because this is pretty important. So that's the axiom number one: a send to a channel, n nil channel blocks forever, always. Whatever you do, it blocks it. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, why this is happening? I think now from the source code is, is clear, uh, there's nothing. So basically, it should, it's, it's not ready to, to send. So it waits until it, it is ready to send, which will never happen though, because there's nothing. But it will have some uh, useful, uh, useful uh, implications later. Okay, I'm not gonna spoil the other one. So, Can I ask a yes. Coming from that translation from C, so this is basically like C code written in Go. 
in a sense, in a sense, it is. Uh, no, no, it's not automatic. It's uh, rewritten, but because you are dealing with the, uh, if you go through the, if you look at the runtime of Go, you see a lot of stuff like this, because uh, there are no generics, right? But you have to have a generic code, and usually you do it like interface, right? That's basically translates to, in the C world, it translates to void pointer, so it could be anything. Uh, and this is this is the same thing. Uh, maybe sh maybe. Uh, uh, just come from Chan C, right? I used to be Chan C yeah. at the beginning. Yes. Uh, and even the there is like C. So. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. It is in a way a lot of C-like, mm -hmm. because it is dealing with a lot of uh, uh, quite low-level things where Go has no. Uh, no power, I would say. It's like, ah, you're dealing with stack pointers and so on, and they're uh, it's different. So it looks like, it's, it very often looks like C. Uh, especially with, with dealing with the, basically, a lot of the stuff with, which, where you, you create, you, you say new, under it somewhere is malloc GC, as always. And you get the, the size of the element and so on, everything to get the, the, the memory. So, uh, it looks a, bit, a little bit, like, but that's maybe why I like it, because I'm, 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 I used to work, uh, I used to do a lot of stuff in C quite a lot, and I, I actually choose, uh, chose Go for a lot of things, uh, but to replace a lot of the C++ stuff I was doing, because the performance is pretty good, and you can squeeze more uh, if you want, and, uh, and in the worst case, there's always the unsafe package, which is pretty good. If you're coming from the C background and you have all the experiences, you, sh you shot yourself in your foot uh, like a million times. Unsafe package is pretty safe because uh, yeah, you are covered in scars, right? So, you know, uh, I wouldn't recommend it for beginners though. So let's, let's, let's proceed. Um, so if C is nil, uh, if the channel is nil, and if it's not blocking, uh, it should not block then it returns false, so basically it goes back, otherwise it's, it's there, it stays there. Here, ah, the comment is pretty long, so don't even bother to read it, but what it basically says is, what it tries to do is, if it's not blocking and, and it's not closed, ah, and this, these parts are, okay, the size is zero and the, there is no, no receiver, or, the size is though bigger than zero, but it's basically full because the count is is the same as the size. Return false. We can't really uh, send anything. Okay, this this is internal stuff, not important. Now we lock. We lock it because these parts were like fast checking if if there, if if there is even a chance that we could send. If not, just bail out quickly, as fast as we can. These bits are really important for the select statements, really. Because if it should not block, but I can't write, okay, I go back straight away. Uh, now it involves lock, it's a mutex. Now it's serialized, so only one GoRoutine do, can do this. And it checks again if it's not locked, uh, if it's not closed. Uh, and here comes the thing. If it's closed, it will panic, right? If, it, if the channel is closed and you try to send, it will panic. That's axiom number two, send to a closed channel panics. As you can see in the code, uh, there are like 10 goroutines created and they, each of them sends uh, 10 items and then closes. If you run this, uh, you'll get a panic because one one go routine will definitely close it before the others, and you get a panic. Uh, so why this is happening? The, thi uh, the idea behind this behavior is that closing a channel is a signal that says, I'm not you're not to the other side, to the receiver part. There'll be no more values anymore, right? 
So if you try to send this signal again, oh, you're actually breaking what you said before that you're going to send again. You're sending again, basically. Uh, usually, the, usually, like if you try uh, close it more times, uh, it means that you have some trouble in the code. Uh, you either not synchronizing correctly all the Go routines or something like this. Uh, there's uh, the idea that what, what if there was a chance to ask if the channel is closed? Like, is it closed? If not, I can, I can write. Uh, there's uh, one issue there. Any ideas? What's the, what's, uh, what's the problem there in this code? Race condition, exactly. There is a race condition. Yes. You try to check it's close. It's not closed, but somebody closes it then, and then you try right. So that's why there is no function like this anymore. Because you would need to lock it first, check if it's closed, and that's what the send is doing. So you probably have something wrong in there anyway. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to spoil the third one. No. So let's go, uh, let's proceed further. Okay. Now, so if you are not closed, we try from the receiver queue, we try to get, fun, get one. That's the pseudo G, that's basically the mapping from the um, channels, uh, channel and go routine mapping. And if, it, if there is somebody to receive, to receive the bit, <coughs> the information, you do send. Uh, I'll cover this send is just right here. Uh, again, some ra race uh, conditions, uh, checking. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I think that most of the time you should, if you're doing a lot of, uh, you have a lot of go routines and it it's feels a little bit messy, race, con uh, race condition checker is really good. Uh, you should use it. Uh, it can detect a lot of stuff. Uh, so, and here's the send direct, which basically is this SRC uh, unsafe pointer is the is the source, and then the pseudo G destination the element that's this that's the that's the stack for the next one, and it moves the memory from one stack to the other stack and the size. Uh, this is to make sure. This bit is again, it's pretty complicated. This has to de deal with the garbage collector that it's not, it, it doesn't, it's basically a memory barrier for a um, uh, garbage collector. So you're moving memory and uh, the garbage collector needs to be aware of this. So it's not deleting uh, any, or reclaiming any mem memory. Uh, so that's sending. Okay. Okay, so in this case, okay, there's no receiver available, so we, are, we have to try to send it. Okay, if there is space, this is the chain buffer function which adds to the, the, the C, the index, race condition, and again, moving, moving memory. He pays the source, this is the pointer to the stack of the Go routine which is trying to send, and it goes to the, and it goes to the, to the channel buffer, the ring buffer. It increases the indexes because it's a ring buffer. If, it's, if, it's, if the index is as the size, we start again from the very beginning. Uh, and, but the queue count, go, uh, queue count goes up. So you can add just what it can take. If, if it's not blocking, it will copy what it wants to send and go back. If it's blocking, though, uh, this part, it's, it looks pretty messy, but what it, this does, it creates this uh, uh, pseudo G function, uh, pseudo G structure, which is the mapping. So this Go routine wants to send, uh, and there are some bits. In interesting is the select done one that's uh, saying, uh, that it can be selected, it's ready. At the, at the beginning is nil, uh, because we are, you know, so, and oh, go park unlock, which does, which basic, which is sleep until it's ready. This goes back to the scheduler, and it unlocks the, the, the lock, the mutex. 
this part is what happens when it's, when it's woken up because some uh, receiver is ready. Okay, this should never happen, this should never happen, right? Spurious wake up, there should not be spurious wake ups uh, and waiting list. And this part is again interesting, if it's closed, so we were woken up because it was closed, we panic, so it's consistent. Otherwise, otherwise, we basically proceed further, so it's all good, and we go. Uh, we, don't, we are not blocked anymore. <coughs> Uh, this is lo uh, this is for uh, like release time, like how how long it took and so on. So that's uh, the the sending bit. So let's go to. Okay, uh, closing. Yes. Okay, I hope it's the third one. I hope I didn't mess it up. Anyway, closing a channel. Yeah, very simple. If the channel is nil, panic. There's no point. No point in. Uh, Closing a channel which never existed at, uh, anyway. So, if you are trying to close a nil channel, you have a bug, probably, very likely, or it can be easily avoided. Then again, we try if it's uh, uh, if it's closed. Double closing, closing means sending a signal. Again, the same thing. Again, we panic. Uh, I, I'm not sure if this is the third one, though. Is it? Uh, no. So receiving is the last bit. Okay. Anyway. So racing. Now we are closed. We acquired the lock so nobody else can access uh, to this channel. We close it. This is says it's closed. And then this is the bit of releasing all readers. Oh, I should have, okay. Anyway, what this does, it takes the first, it basically gets all the waiting uh, receivers and goes through each of them and clears the, the memory. Actually, what it means, this writ basically returns a zero value if it's closed. So, because it, Clears the memory. Uh, writers, they will all panic. Uh, writers will all panic because they will uh, get left. And as we, as we saw here, uh, in this bit, they are woken up. They end up here, send on closed channel. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Ah, releasing all the stuff. Lo there is a lot of bits of like race, 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 there's a race checker. So now the receiving part. This is really for uh, the compiler and the runtime, how to, do it, how to do it, how it translates, because there's when you're receiving just one and more. Anyway, receiving. It looks, it's almost one-to-one -to, -one to the sending, so. Uh, but over here, the EP is the, is, the, is the bit where we want to receive. So again, if the channel is nil and we don't want to block, it returns. Funnily enough, this I think goes again like most of the Go code I have seen. It just says return, which basically means zero values in case of bulls. As you can see, select and received, it's false, false. But it's not written here. Uh, it's true that most of the time I see uh, return with the, ex with the explicit values, but okay, this is runtime. And it blocks again. On an L channel, it blocks, blocks forever again. Uh, why? That's, oh, where's my, my, uh, my mouse? Okay, here. Why? Uh, as in the send case, it doesn't exist. So it's not ready for receiving, and it will never be ready. Uh, if you look at the spec, it's written clearly that if it's a, a nil channel and so on, uh, or closed channel and blocks and so on. So, but but it has pretty some uh, some um, good. Uh, 
features you can use, especially with the blocking and unblocking. So you see, I, want, I actually want to wait here for two channels to, until they are closed. In this case, OK, I do. Now, if you remember, I'm waiting. OK, there are, there's nobody uh, sending anything on the, on the A and B, and I wait a block. Or, or really, I actually, in this case, I actually go through all of them again and again and again until one of them uh, fires up. And I said, close through. OK. But as we see later, uh, reading from a closed channel works all the time, every time. So if the A is closed, B will never be fired. I will end up in an uh, infinite loop just reading from the closed channel A all the time, and so this doesn't work. The solution is pretty simple. I just put nil there. So if I get on A something, I put nil, so it blocks. But because it's a non-blocking select statement, it will just go back and try the other one. So I'll wait, and if both of them are nil, so and I would block on. Uh, I would uh, I go through all, all of them, and they are both nil. So I basically don't check. I jump out of the select, and it's done. So that's how it uh, how uh, how you can use the nil uh, channel in a select statement. You shouldn't really use it without uh, outside of select statement. It doesn't really make sense because unless you for some really strange reason want to have a go routine sleeping until you uh, shut down. Uh, which basically is easier, I think it's easier just to close it, right? Get out of the function. So, uh, okay. I can leave it there. So let's go through the rest. Uh, again, the fast uh, try, can I really read something? Can I really receive? So I don't want to block size zero and there's nobody or, or uh, the size is bigger but the, the count is zero so it's empty and it's not closed. As you can see these are atomic so it uses uh, the instructions from the, from, the, uh, from the CPU to load these and check if it is, return false, false. So basically, there's no value. Uh, it's not selected, and uh, it's not closed. But there's nothing to read. And again, it looks very similar. We lock again, so we now have exclusive access. And now we try again, same thing. If it's, clo uh, if it's closed, and the count is zero, that basically means it's empty and it's closed. So there are no more values. Then we, and if the EP is not nil, that basically means I really actually want some value. It's not, an, it's not the semaphore case where I have no data. I'll get one. I'll get empty zero value out of it. Straight away, true, false, go out. Here we unlock, yeah. Don't forget to unlock locks, uh, unless you want a deadlock, right? Okay, so if it's not closed and there is still something, or maybe it's closed but there is still some data, we find the sender and we receive, from, we, we receive from the sender. This is really, again, one-to-one, -one, basically one-to-one. -one. You see, type move, see, again, Get the memory, get the memory. And we are getting it again from, uh, from uh, yeah, we're copying the data from sender. If, if the queue is full, yeah, if, uh, if the queue is full, in this case, it's, this case is for the, uh, the synchronous mm, channel, but there's no buffer, so unbuffered channel. In this case, we are really copying from stack to stack. 
Otherwise, there's a queue. That's the producer-consumer case. Uh, we can find, find which element we, we need. That's the last one. Uh, uh, that's the top. Or it's not the last one. It's the, the, the lowest one. It's the, the first one there. Uh, and we copy, copy the data. And we copy it from the uh, channel's buffer. Uh, and yeah, a bit of, a bit of uh, uh, bureaucracy, like handling the, the indexes, we unlock, release, release, go. Go ready means schedule. So it will try to run this, uh, this the, the, the QP, which is the, the sender, and the sender will be woken up. And uh, the receiving part goes happily again, what it wants. Now, so the interesting part was the, that it returns a value always, the closed one, the closed case. So receiving from a closed channel reference value immediately, and if it's empty, a zero value. So uh, why, I think it's quite clear, we want to, even though it's closed and if it's buffered, you still want to receive all the data which was there, possibly, maybe not, maybe you want. Uh, so that's why you can receive a lot of values and that's why also why you can receive all the time because how would you otherwise distinguish that there's no more value? You always get the zero value if there's, uh, if there's nothing else. And, uh, but the important part, it returns two values. It returns the value wanted and uh, a bool saying, is it closed or is it not? So. If you re receive the end and you see a zero value for your type, and this bit is set, it's closed. So it's end. There's no more values. We're done. Uh, you can use it. And that's how the range statement on the channel works. Because it is equal to what the, 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 the for loop under, under it says. It basically says, get all the stuff. If it's OK, that means it's not closed yet do something. If it's closed, you switch off. That's the range statement. Uh, so, and uh, well, there are uh, in that source file, then there are bits of the how the select statement is uh, translated and so on. And I'm leaving this for now because I think I'm not sure if we have enough time. Uh, we have very little, so I'll try to go fast now. Uh, in this case, as you can see, this is a, a bit of a code which you can see a lot, uh, very often. What it does, it creates this channel which has no values. You don't care because you don't care about the values. You are using it just to indicating that you want to stop, and you want to stop all the go routines. In this case, it's just one created and it waits, right? It, it, it either waits for the timeout or for a signal, it should finish. Because you can have multiple readers, you can use this uh, the finish channel across any number of go routines you want to use. And <coughs> just the weight, uh, the, as you can see, there's a weight group, which is just a helper, then you can weight that the start, all the started uh, uh, go routines, they all, all actually have all finished. And you, and you don't, you actually uh, synchronize by closing the, the, um, the channel. So you don't care about the value uh, because there's none. And if you close it, the select statement will fire because you can read all the time. Uh, and you don't care about the value, you, you, you're done, you finish. Uh, that's one of the things how, we, how uh, the empty channel, basically the semaphore, in this case, it is unbuffered. So it's really just uh, sort of a, could be translated to conditional variable, I would say. And uh, you say, okay, in this case, close, finish. Okay, so uh, I think these are the four points I want, I want all of you to remember is Sending and receiving from a nail channel blocks forever. If you are using it out of select statement, 
or if it's the only thing in your select statement, you have a problem. And the other part is that make sure that you're sending always on the open channel. And if you close it, don't try to, uh, to, to, to close it again or to send again anything. Uh, you'll get a panic and so you can debug it pretty easily. You'll see uh, which goals you did it and you probably need to synchronize them somehow. And the last one, that the receive, can actually always uh, returns a value, at least a zero value. It's again for the, for the select statement where you want to finish a lot of, uh, of tasks at one. Now we will quickly cover maybe a little bit controversial topic because in, in Go the, the tendency uh, is to use channels for everything all the time. Uh, my experience uh, from, for example, from gaming is that sometimes you need to just to change the state of something. You don't really need to send any value. You need to change the state. And in this case, uh, there are some benchmarks I may be properly, I probably uh, post it or uh, put it in the comments for the talk. Uh, it's much easier very often if you're changing state or something like this to actually use a mutex. Because uh, you get less overhead, you don't have to care if the channel, uh, if the go routine which is handling the receiving part is, is closed, you know, shut down properly and so on. It's not leaking and so on. So it's much, sometimes it's easier to, to, to make a, a simple mutex and it's much faster as well. But if you're sending some data, or you're creating pipelines, you're uh, actually really, uh, or passing the data, use channels as much as you can. But for changing the state, for example, or if you have a map or if you use some sort of cache, like you have a map, a lot of the coroutines can access it. It probably is better to use mutex uh, to make sure that it's just one changing the state of the map and, uh, and be done with it. It's easier. If you, if you try to write code which will do this and use all the channels, you see it's pretty complex. But uh, when you have mutex, it's like lock, do your stuff, unlock. Simple. Uh, and last bit is the performance. Uh, as you have seen, there's locking involved. So, uh, and there's locking involved on the sending side as well as the receiving side. So, if it's really intensive, and I'm not talking about like, you know, I'm, I'm talking about when you have really a big load. Most of, the pe most of the stuff doesn't have that load, really. But if you hit that point that uh, it seems that, you know, it's not fast enough, it's not enough. It might be the case, as it was, for example, in Datadog, if you know what Datadog is, is a service for um, monitoring. Uh, they were sending really granular data, like each metric with the timestamp over the channel. But there were like millions of them. So it was really slow. So then they started batching them. Okay, this is a measurement taken in this time from this server. Bang, it's 10 metrics at, at a time. The speed up was six times, straight away, because it's less locking. If you, because you have, for each message you have to lock, unlock, and so on. And if you have a lot of, lot of uh, senders or receivers, uh, they all fight for the lock. So it's better to patch the data. That helps, that helps a lot. That helps in, in, even if you do C, C and C++ stuff, right? Uh, that's, uh, you try this first, if you can. The other thing is, there is this lock-free stuff, like lock-free uh, ring buffers, which you can use. In certain cases, you can write it. It's not that complicated, or you can find packages which are actually implementing it. Try this one. It probably will help, because lock-free lock -free, uh, data structures, how they work is that they use only the uh, elementary atomic operations like load, compare, and swap. Uh, so it's usually uh, much faster because there's no fighting for the lock. If, even if the lock is, uh, is really the, 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 the fast, fastest implementation you can ever get, it will still be slower than uh, using the atomic operations. Or maybe think about different approach, like using a mutex, you know, because that's just one, you fight over, not two, and so on. 
or there's not receivers and senders, it might be easier to experiment with it. But uh, otherwise, I would say most of the time you don't really need it. I actually need it just once to try a different thing. And it was uh, when I was trying to write a, um, a file system in user land where you have, where you possibly have a lot of, uh, lot of access to one file. And then the mutex made much more sense. Uh, so that's probably the only place where I used it. So thanks a lot. I hope, I hope it did not uh, demotivate you. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, now you know more and you will uh, use uh, the channels more wisely and to your, better, um, uh, to your benefit. Uh, thanks very much. If you have any questions, ask. I'm sorry if it was too technical or something, but uh, I found it really interesting for me. So, so, so more of a meta question, but was also mentioned the, the rewrite of the compiler in some C++ and how uh, you, you showed a lot of code that was ported from C++. It is Go. It is Go. It is yeah, valid yeah. Go, right? No, but the thing is that C gives you the most freedom because it, the mapping to the hardware is the closest, right? Uh, and if you want to deal with these things, you end up in this world. If you have stack pointers and use some magic on memory, uh, you end up with pointer arithmetics. You have some address, you have some base address, and then you have offsets, and you know, and you hope for the best, right? Or have that. Checks, as you, as you could see there, it checks, okay, this could never happen, this could never happen. The throw statement which you see there was basically, this should never happen, right? But it's there for just for... But I personally f uh, find it much easier to write. A lot of the services uh, which I used to write in C++ or C, I tend to go for Go because performance-wise, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not for high frequency trading on, uh, on the stock market, right? But because they're telling me 10 milliseconds is, uh, that's forever. But uh, most of the time it's good. So any more questions? No. So thank you a lot.